Hi, welcome to the Horner Cafe. What can I get you? Hello, I'd like a cup of random spooky letters sent to my house, please. What's the address for delivery? 657 Boulevard. Coming right up. Good evening, and thank you so much for joining us at the Haunted Cafe. Grab a drink and a comfy chair, because we have a spooky tale to tell. But first, we would normally talk about drinks. <laughs> this one, we're not so much, because I'm sick, and... And I just, just like to be hydrated. <laughs> hydrated. <laughs> so we're both just drinking water right now. Yep. And, uh, yeah, we're finally back, you know, doing the Haunted Cafe. It's been, I don't know, like a couple months since we've... It's done it's, this. It's, it's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> the last one I did was the back rooms. That whole like going oh, through yeah, the main yeah, line. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah. Jeez. So, yeah. So if my voice is a little scratchy, sorry, I'm sick. Um, not the big C or anything. Just, just sick. So, today, we are going to be talking about the Watcher of New Jersey. The Watcher. Uh, I, I, I thought I thought you meant uh, uh, the Marvel character, the Watcher. Is there a Marvel character? Yeah, there is. He's, he's like this dude. I think he's called the Watcher. He's like this dude with this big freaking head, and he's like the Watcher of the universe. <laughs> oh, I didn't, I didn't know ominous. that. <laughs> There's so many like Marvel characters that yeah. you just don't know. In, like, in one of the know. in one of the Marvel movies, you see Stan Lee talking. Stan Lee's sitting on a rock, just sitting there talking to him. Oh, and really? they're just like, what the crap? And this dude does not shut up. <laughs> oh, Stan Lee, you mean, doesn't shut up? Yeah, Stan Lee oh. doesn't shut up. He looks back, he's like, what was that? And he's like, anyway, I told the guy. Or something like that. And it's funny. Yeah. But anyway, so the reason why I'm doing the Watch Your House is because it's such like a big thing right now in the news and the media with the Netflix seri yeah. series coming out. About and, all that. And I just want to say that the Netflix series is not the actual true story nope. if any if you watch it like it's based loosely on the watcher yeah like like even during the trailer you can see yeah. that like okay half of this stuff did not happen like i just want to <laughs> say that like before we get into it the ryan murphy's like version of the watcher it's probably a really good show like it's probably really interesting and movie. stuff no it's a tv series i thought oh, they turned are you sure i, I thought it was, sure. a I thought it was TV just a movie series. Oh, I don't know. Either way, the 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 It's the, something the on Netflix. Yeah. <laughs> the program. <laughs> yeah, it's something on Netflix, but it's you know, it's loosely based on this story. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to give that as a you know uh what's it called? Like a, a word of caution, but not really caution. <laughs> and um also before we begin, I just want to say that I will be mentioning the address. We already did mention the address. It's six fifty seven Boulevard. Boulevard. Um don't come at me because I mentioned it, because even before the Watcher Netflix series, it was a, an address that you could find, like, in two seconds. It was all over the newsletters, yeah. it was all over the internet, it was so, all over, how do you think Netflix found it? Yeah, because I know <laughs> that there's been a lot of reports of people going to this house to look at it. Which is stupid, it's which, just a house. But, but the thing is, yeah, it's just a house, but these people that bought it, they knew what they were getting into. Oh, yeah. yeah like, we'll, get, we'll talk about it, yeah. but... They were fully disclosed, aware of the Watcher, mm -hmm. the letters, and all the crap with it. So they were aware when they bought this house. Yep. So, I mean, no, they probably, like, didn't give Netflix permission to, like, tell the address and stuff. Yeah. But... It's probably a lot more active now than what it was. Yeah. Like, maybe, maybe around when it first happened, it was active, yeah, and then it died off. Yeah, it was Because they have moved out. It was active. But, yeah. Well, I mean the people that are living there now. Yeah, no, well, I'm saying yeah. like the people who lived there before had moved out, I'm yeah. assuming, right? Yeah. So they had moved out, and that's when the story came out. So I'm assuming there was still a bunch of people going there, but nobody noticed because there's nobody at the house. Now there's somebody at the house, and Netflix runs the world right now, so yeah. you're, you and have now, like millions now of now people have, showing up. Yeah, now you have a bunch of people showing up at the house, and it's causing issues, which, understandably, but yeah. you can't, you know, it was going to happen anyway. Yeah. And you know? I, have, I have a string, I don't, I don't know why. But I have a really strange feeling that now the people that live at that house are going to start experiencing spooky letters. Oh, I feel like that, And it's that going too. to be from a fan. It's going to be from a fan of the show or just yeah. somebody who is really interested and they're going to do it to add on to it because they're going to feel like, oh, yeah. if Netflix does this, then maybe they'll do an adaptation honestly, of when I did it. You know what I mean? Honestly, all this stuff <laughs> happened pretty recently. It happened yeah. through 2014 to 2018. Hmm. So it's not that far no, away. No, it's not. But we'll get into it. But anyway... Just, you know, quick disclosure of all the Netflix stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. 
I just, I was going to talk about this anyway, but I just thought it was kind of like a cool idea to obviously like jump on the popularity yeah, train. Yeah, we, we, had, we had planned to do this way before yeah. Netflix even came out with a series. Like we, we planned this like almost a year ago. Yeah, because we live in New Jersey and yeah. it's a, it's a, a story that I've heard mm-hmm. way before Netflix, way before exactly. anything. So, you know, just word of caution or whatever the word, you know, whatever that is. You had it straight from the horse's mouth. Yep. So... The first thing that I would like to ask you, Alan, is okay. what would you do if your dream house turned out to be a nightmare? If my dream house turned out to be a nightmare, then it wouldn't be a dream house. It'd be a nightmare house. So I don't really know. <laughs> but like, <laughs> what would you do if someone was trying to actually get out of the house that you just bought, you just paid for, and all that? Well, like, well I'll tell yeah. you one thing right now. I'm a very paranoid but like in general yeah I'm paranoid. oh yeah we're, we're like i paranoid. i literally have a weapon at every corner of the house that is accessible mm-hmm. as quick as i can get to it yep so if i if i even if i even feel like somebody's outside my house that night they're getting a whole face full of stuff i'll tell you that right now they're getting <laughs> smacked they're getting smacked with an axe handle i have i have a double-bladed machete axe they're gonna take to the kneecaps like i have a lot like yeah. they're, they're done like i'm gonna find out who you are right then and there <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, it's so hard to, like, like we'll get into it, but it's so hard to figure out who it is. Did they, did the they wa- ever send no. letters back to the guy? Did they ever try communicating with him? There's no way to. I'm saying, like, he's he's putting letters yeah, in the mailbox. Yeah, he's putting mail- letters in their mailbox. Yeah, so, but he they're not no. putting letters in the mailbox for him no, to get. But... See, see, I, I would have well, done you... that. <laughs> Go ahead. I, I, I would I would have done that, but I would have had it like a, like a, like a, like a spring trap with a bunch of... <laughs> Glitter or something? No, no, with like with like a virus of some kind. Like oh, I would I would have bottled up a virus. Is this of what some is kind. this why I'm sick? No, <laughs> I'm not saying. <laughs> anyway, I would have bottled up a virus. Like I would have bottled up the big C. And as soon as this dude opens it, all that nasty mist just sprays in this dude's face. Jesus. And if he's then sick, you know. while everyone yeah. else isn't sick, I'm gonna yeah. hear his ass coughing outside the door. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was gonna say something a little bit more like crazier, gross, but like, yeah, don't. Oh, no, no, not gross. A little bit more um, chaotic. No, what's what's uh, a little bit more cartel like? But oh, I'm not geez, gonna go no. that far. <laughs> but basically, like what what my question is, like, would you try and stay stay at the house and like fight them? Oh yeah, most definitely. Or would you like run away? Like, like you, leave. I I would stay there because yeah. I'm I'm a heathen. Yeah, I am I know. a freaking heathen. Like if you if you're going to war at my house, if you're if you're coming at me at my house, you best believe there's gonna be retaliation. There's not gonna be like I'm scared, hide the kids. If I have kids, they're gonna be trained <laughs> to kill you from a hundred yards away with a sniper rifle. Do not test me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's us. I would would have played Clue. I would have found out who that was within the first week. I would have played Clue. (laughs) Guess who? (laughs) That would have been me. Like, I'm not. I wouldn't mess around with any of that. Like, even now, when we get like, like, when we did like, when we thought there was like threats at like our old apartment in here. Oh yeah, well when I was freaking ready, man. When whoever was looking in like our bedroom, yeah, yeah. Stuff, when those people we were, were looking ready, in our, yeah. Yeah, when people were looking in through our window. There was a bunch of people outside doing stuff. Mm-hmm. They were like banging on doors and windows and stuff like that. Yeah. I armored up. Like yep. I had, I had two Kali sticks on my back. I had a co, I had a covert vest. I had my freaking BB <laughs> gun in a holster that I was gonna blast in my face with. I had a knife on my side. I came out there with a black mask, wearing all black and my war boots. I promise he doesn't hurt nobody. No, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a bit psychotic. <laughs> but I, I was. I was literally ready for war. Like I was like like Odin was by my side that day. <laughs> <laughs> like I was ready. <laughs> yeah, I just I just kind of wanted to ask you. I knew your response cuz I know you obviously. Yeah, exactly. But I just wanted to ask those questions like at the beginning before you even like hear the story just to see if like your opinion would change as mm-hmm. like you know the tale goes on. So mm-hmm. I kind of want you to think of this like as if it was you going through this. <laughs> okay, okay. You know? <laughs> okay. So <laughs> so, as you know, the story takes place in New Jersey, which mm-hmm. is the same state as us. It's actually yeah. only about, like, an hour and a half away. Really? Yeah, it's not that it's far. Not that close. Yeah, I was kind of, I was one, I'm kind of, like, one of those people that wanted to go drive, but... Wow. Before, like, the yeah. Netflix movie. Like, and, I, and it wasn't like I wasn't going to go up to the door or whatever and knock, but yeah. just seeing it, you know. I've, I've Google Earthed it. I think it's pretty cool looking. It's a nice house, you know. Um... It's located in Westfield, New Jersey, um, which sounds close, but it's farther, you know, it's farther than I thought it was. Yeah. Um, 
and it's in a sur- suburban area, so it's like you know the picket fences. And, oh yeah, you the know. white picket fences. Yep. the little little labradoodle in the front. But yard. once you find out how much they bought this house for, like holy crap, man. So anyway, um, uh, the houses are close enough that you could probably hear each other, uh, like hear each other talk in your own house or like your toilet flush. Literally, all you hear is yeah. this next door. No. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, they're cookie-cutter houses. Not cookie-cutter, but they're, like, right next to each yeah, other. Yeah, they're, yeah. you know, it's a neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Um, they're very expensive, very nice. It's kind of old money in that area, too. Old money. I don't know if I said that weird with my cold. But old you, money? Old money. Okay, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know if it sounded weird. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's just, it's it's a nice place. We could never afford it. So don't Hell worry no. about it. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. So... <laughs> In 2014, Maria and Derek, I can't, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing their last name right. I think it's Broadus. Let me see. It's B-R-O-A-D-D-U-S. Broadus. It's either Broadus or Broadus. Oh, well, I'm going to say oh. Broadus. Okay. So, sorry if it's wrong. Don't at me, um, really. <laughs> yeah. So, they, they bought the house on 657 Boulevard. Boulevard. 657 Boulevard. <laughs> Boulevard. <laughs> yeah. Um. They paid $1.3 million Jesus Christ. for this house. And it was <gasps> their, their <laughs> dream home. You know, it was wow. their dream home. It's what they wanted. It, it's a really pretty house. Like, if you want to Google it, you know. The you American can. Dream yeah. kind of thing. Their American Dream. The American Dream is dead. That's different but, story. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so, they were taking their time with uh, moving into the house. They wanted mm. to paint and remodel stuff before they moved in. So... Technically, throughout all of this, they never actually lived in the house. <laughs> they still were remodeling and painting and all wow. that, that stuff. So yeah. Netflix, strike one for that. Yeah. Right there. Well, I mean, I didn't see the thing, but I'm assuming that they already moved in. Yeah, It looked like, like it looked like they were already yeah. set up in the, in yeah. the trailer. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, so they didn't, you know, it's a cool idea to uh, paint and all that stuff before you actually move in all your stuff. Yeah. I wish we could have done that with like our apartment. But we didn't have time. We basically just had to throw all of our crap in here and expect it to, you know, work. (laughs) But, you know, if you can take your time, move it in, do it. So, um, it was a hot summer night, three days after they bought the house. And Derek was at the house painting. I don't know where, you know, what room or any, you know, Mm -hmm. particulars or anything like that. But, um, it was like 10 o'clock at night, something like that. Um... He decides to go and take a break and go check the mail. Uh, since they had just moved in, I don't think he was really expecting anything. But, because it's only three days. Like, unless yeah. you transfer your mail that quick, like, I don't, it's, you I, know. It's a, it, I think it's like it a It takes a process. while, doesn't it? Yeah. It took, it took a while for us to switch just, like, the apartment yeah. number. Yeah. Like, it took us, like, so, two or three weeks for us to get everything. Like, you know, I didn't think of that, <laughs> but that's kind of suspicious. Like, what are you switching, why are you checking your mail so soon? Yeah. Unless it was just cause, like, Maybe. just to get a break. I don't know. Anyway, to me, that <laughs> seems kind of, like, soon to go check your mail. Yeah. But anyway, so, he went to go look at it, and I'm pretty sure he's expecting just, like, junk mail or whatever. Mm-hmm. That didn't happen. What was in the mailbox would change the course of their lives forever. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun. But before we get to that, I wanted to talk a little bit about, like, the background of the family. Mm -hmm. So Derek, who is the husband, um, he actually grew up in Maine. Uh, He moved to Manhattan, which is in New York. And um, he was working at an insurance company. So that's how he was getting all that. Hey, yo, I'm working for insurance. (coughs) So that's how he was getting. (coughs) (coughs) Excuse me, I'm dying. (laughs) So um, that's kind of how he was getting, like, his money. And he was. Doing really good there. He moved up, like, the ladder really quickly. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's While how... he was living at that place? No. This is oh, before. Okay. This is, like, say, before that's a, that's a distance. Well, I mean, I don't know how close they are to New York, but when I looked well, it up, it's, like, a three-hour drive. Yeah, it's something like, uh, what? When I, because, uh, or, yeah, for some reason, for those of you who don't know, I'm a meter reader, and I had typed in an address onto my phone to try and find it, and for some reason it took me all the way to Manhattan, New York. I have no clue why, but it was like well, a three-hour drive. If it's from here to New York, yeah. and it's three hours, and this is an hour, I'm pretty sure it's north. So it's about an hour's worth of drive. Oh, oh that's not too bad. Though. Yeah. 
But um, anyway, so it wasn't while they were living here or going to live here or anything. Mm -hmm. This was like way before. I'm assuming he still had this job. So maybe he was mo traveling and moving, whatever. Yeah. But um, if you guys hear that in the background, that's our air freshener. <laughs> yeah, it's our air freshener. <laughs> but anyway, so he was working at an insurance company. Maria, the wife, was actually born and raised in Westfield, and her childhood home was even a few blocks away from the new one that they just bought. So yeah. she was, you know, this was a family, like, oriented area for her. Like, yeah. her, her childhood home's there. She grew up there, you know. Hmm. Um, they had three kids, and everyone was just really extremely excited to move into this place and start a new, you know, start their new lives, their new home. Um, I remember even reading a part in the article where, like, the kids were so excited about picking out, like, their rooms, and they were so excited about the chimneys that were in there because then they, they you know, waiting for Santa to yeah. come. Like, you know, it sounded like it was going to be a really good place for them. I'm excited for that new Santa movie. Yeah. It's yeah, a bit <laughs> off topic, but if you, if you guys ever look, look, just look up the new Santa Claus movie, you guys, you guys are going to like it's it. It's called, like, Violent Night or something. Yeah, it's like Violent yeah. Night or something. It's, it looks freaking hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> But, um, like I said, what Derek found in that mailbox was something they would never have expected. Uh, they received their very first letter. So, when Derek first got this letter, it was about 10 o'clock at night, like I said, and he was alone in the house painting. Uh, I know I already said all this stuff, but, mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to say word for word what the letter said, because, as far as I could tell, I couldn't find, like, the whole letter, like, the whole letter itself yeah. all you can find online is pieces yeah so like i said i'm not really gonna go and like read the whole letter from beginning to end because i couldn't find it um all i could find was like this per this letter come or this piece comes from this possible letter like it was honestly really hard to find which pieces come from what letter yeah. like you know um so what i figured i would do in the end is kind of just read some of the pieces of them like, you know, some of the pieces of the uh, letters just as, like, a ending. Okay. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, so, at first, the letter started with a warm welcome to the family. You know, welcome to the house, welcome to the neighborhood. But, obviously, it got really weird. Um, the writer begins to say that watching the house has been, like, a generational thing. As his father and his father's father have all taken turns watching the house. And it's now his turn. Um, the house has been watched since it was built in 1905. Hmm. And the writer goes on to say that there may have been some sort of history to the house. And he asks, have you found what's in the walls? Is it telling you its secrets? You know, just saying really creepy stuff. But yeah. it's kind of like almost, um, not nonchalant, but it's almost like normal. Not normal stuff, but you know, um, what's the word? Like edgelord stuff yeah it's like yeah. <laughs> stuff that anybody could say you know like the obviously walls, they have secrets yeah Can it's obviously like a wall <laughs> you know walls it's I, feel like, I feel like he just got done watching a bunch of um uh what's that dude's name uh the horror film guy um Stephen king no 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 the uh the one who's saying the one who sings that part in the thriller Song. Michael Jackson? No, no. Oh, Vincent Price. Vincent Price. That's I'm like, it. what? <laughs> it sounds like he just got done watching a bunch of Vincent Price films. And he was yeah. like, you know what? I'm going to freak somebody out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, I'm in a spooky mood. <laughs> yep. And then at some point in time, he starts mentioning that, yeah, um, or, you know, some point in time in the letter, he notices that the family has started bringing contractors in and they're remodeling the house. Um, the writer said that the house wouldn't be happy and that they were destroying it. I said, depending on what they were doing with the contractors, they could honestly be destroying historical elements to the house. Yeah. Because it's a 1905 house. So it's, you know, I looked on Zillow and it definitely was um, built in 1905. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, you know, but after all, it's their house, so they should be able to do what they please. Yeah. So yeah. whether they're destroying historical elements or whatever, they paid that million for it, it's yeah, theirs, you know? Exactly. Um, but I can see how maybe the letter writer kind of got upset that they're destroying these elements. Yeah. You know, but it's, you know, it's on them. Um, so then it takes an even darker turn. 
um, because then the letter starts mentioning their children. And like I said, they haven't really been at the house all that often. They've only been here three days. Yeah. You know, and they haven't moved in yet. So, um, they said, they start saying, I've seen them. There's at least three. And if he starts even asking, like, is there more on the way? So, like, he's even asking her if she's, the mom's pregnant. Like, it's oh, wow. weird, you know? <laughs> um, then the, what, then the writer starts kind of, like, making fun of the fact that he'll never be caught because basically he says, I could be anyone. A bunch of people drive down the street every day. I could be any one of those. I could be looking in your windows at every, any time. Um, you won't even notice, which is really creepy for us yeah, because is. we've had that happen yeah. before. Feel, and we like, didn't notice. No. I, I feel I feel like there's like besides a guy that just got done watching a bunch of Vincent Price films, I feel like this is the guy that like goes to like like a, a like a BJ's wholesaler store and takes like a free sample. He's like, oh, I'll have a free sample. And then he comes back with the glasses and nose and mustache. You don't recognize me. I'll have another sample. And then the the person's just like, what is going on? And then he comes back with, like, another, like, another, like, sunglasses or something. I don't know. It's not not the same guy. it's not (laughs) me. It's not me. I swear. It wasn't me. But, I mean, it is is terrifying because you don't know who it is. No, you don't. You know, especially at this standpoint because it's only been three days. They don't even know anybody that lives in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. They probably haven't really met any of the neighbors or anything and you know it's you know unless you're staring out all of your windows at every 24 7 you're not gonna know if somebody's peeking in or whatever no you know um and then the letter lent i can talk i promise (laughs) the letter sorry oh go ahead what's weird is with the technology they have nowadays why didn't they just install cameras we'll get to that oh okay but <laughs> I, they didn't for the longest time, I will say. Dumbasses. <laughs> um, so the letter ended after that with a simple, just welcome friends, welcome, let the party begin. And it was followed by a signature typed in a cursive font, the watcher. So he didn't, he didn't hand write anything. Yeah. Um, so obviously. Well, yeah, because that'd be too easy to yeah. find out who it is. You just match up the handwriting. Well, oh, honestly. Smart. Well, his handwriting i've learned watching or listening to morbid good podcast by the way not sponsored at all but <laughs> morbid they talk about uh handwriting a lot and they said that it's actually kind of like a bogus evidence because you can yeah. change your handwriting oh yeah you can easy. i, 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 I yeah. can change it up very quick like like i i'm yeah. like my handwriting is chicken scratch if i switch yeah. my left hand guess what you are not gonna know who that is mm-hmm like, but my, it's, it, you know, it's just easy to. It is. It's bake. also really, really easy to copy it too. Yeah. Like if if you can get like the penmanship, like depending on what kind of pen they use, if they're just using a ballpoint pen, that's extremely, extremely easy to copy. Mm-hmm. If they're using like like a like a uh, like a um, what's it called a funnel pen? Is that what it's oh, called? the fountain pen. Fountain pen. If they're yeah. using like a fountain pen, then there'll be like those wide strokes mm-hmm. and stuff like that. The calligraphy that would, kind. Yeah, of the pen. calligraphy. Yeah. That would be a little bit more difficult. But if you get a if you get a pen and you know how to do that, I mean, yeah. Yeah, totally. I mean, you know, obviously, like, yeah. people that do ransom notes and stuff, they mm-hmm. all type. I mean, yeah. you know, but, so rightfully so, Derek was obviously terrified. It's 10 o'clock at night that he's reading this, too. And <laughs> You got to hear mail late, didn't you? Huh? I said he got to his mail late, didn't you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, and so, you know, you're terrified. It's pitch black dark outside. You're in the house with all these lights on and stuff like that, mm-hmm. and... You cannot see out. They can see in, obviously. Yeah. So he, like, actually ran around the house and was flicking off all the lights and, like, was ducking around the windows, which I would do, obviously, yeah. I mean, honestly. We do, we, do, we do that now. Yeah. Like, if, if, we, if, we think, <laughs> if we think somebody's talking outside and we're trying to figure out who the heck it is, we turn off all the lights and we look around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, you, said, like, you know, obviously you try and get the higher advantage point or yeah, whatever. Exactly. So, like, he, like I said, turned off all the lights, you know. Basically, stop painting. Obviously, you can't paint in the dark, but yeah. <laughs> but you know. And um, I'm not sure if he called the police like that night specifically, but he did at some point in time. And this police officer that he talked to was such a Jersey police officer because every article that I said that I read, the police officer just goes, "What the fuck." <laughs> and to me, if that doesn't really describe like a Jersey police officer, I don't know what does. You know? What the, the fuck? fuck, bro? What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, like, what the fuck, bro? But um, yeah. So obviously, like at this point in time, 
Uh, the police couldn't really do anything because well, they can't do anything anyway. They don't know where it's going. What are they going to do? Well, that's the thing. Like yeah. they can't do they anything. Can't do they anything. don't know where the letter's coming from. They don't know yeah. who it is. They don't even know if it was in there. Like how long it's been in there? Yeah. See, like, you like know? my thing is like, like I mean, I'm sure this is probably going to be talked about too. But like, I told you, like, I'm paranoid, mm-hmm. right? So you know what I would do? I would buy a fingerprint duster for paper, and I would find out whose fingerprint yeah. it is. I would go to the police station, match up the fingerprint, and find exactly who it is right then and there. I mean, it's, it would be that simple. It's 2014, <laughs> so they would have. That. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. That's that's been out since yeah. like that's been out since like the 80s. 30s. Like no, no like, earlier than that no, because no, they no. used to use baby powder. Yeah, but to find they didn't fingerprints have a database and stuff. or anything. No, so no, they didn't have a database. Like, yeah. I'm saying like the whole fingerprint testing thing was like yeah. that's like that was like way before then. They used like like baby powder and stuff like that, like some sort of dust mm-hmm. to because the dust would uh, stick to the oils from the yeah. finger and whatnot. Like it, I, I would have figured out. Like I said, I would have figured out who it was within the first week. Like I would have, I would have been that guy that mm-hmm. would have. I would have stayed at the house. While oh, I everyone else watched in the house like a hawk. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I would have set up trail cams. I would have set yeah. up some other cameras. I would have been. I would have been fingerprint dusting all the paper. I would have been driving I by. I would have been walking down like people's license plates and. Shit oh yeah, like yeah. That. I would. I would have. Like, yeah. I would have wrote all that down. I'd be yeah. sitting. I'd be sitting up on the top floor with a set of binoculars, just watching cars, seeing if I could find somebody looking in. Like that would be me. I am that yeah. paranoid. I will literally station up a stakeout until I find out who the <laughs> hell is sending me these letters. Yeah. And I would talk back to the person just to really get them riled up. I would I would put yeah. letters in my mailbox just to get them fired up to see if they slip up. That That's what I would do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like... <laughs> <coughs> Stop Excuse it. Me. I'm dying. <laughs> um, yeah, so, obviously, um, that, that whole letter is freaky. But there's yeah. another point in the letter that, to me, is, like, even freakier. So... According to the letter, it says, I asked the woods to bring me young blood, and it looks like they've listened. Which, at first, I was really confused. Yeah. Because, to me, I was do- I was thinking of, like, the literal sense of woods. Mm-hmm. I was thinking, like, there's no trees or, prop- you know, woods around the yeah. property. Yeah. Like, you're literally in the middle of a suburb. Like, there's houses everywhere now- around you. Yeah. But, it turns out that the previous owner's last name was Woods. So, the new family, the Broadduses, asked the previous owners about the Watcher and his letters. And they actually did receive a letter from him, one letter from him a few days before they actually moved out. Huh. And they had been there for 23 years before that point, never oh, got wow. a letter. <laughs> All of a sudden, a few days before they moved out, they got one. And it basically said the same thing to them, that they had been watching the house for a while. Yeah. And... They don't really talk about, like, what was in the letter. They just described it as odd. Yeah. But they didn't take it serious, and they tossed it in the trash. That's stupid. Like, which I feel like, I don't know if I would throw it away, but I would be like, eh, what's this? I've been here 23 years. Why are you sending me this now? Like, yeah. you know? Yeah, no, I, I, would, I wouldn't have thrown it away. I would have kept it. Yeah, I would have kept it as any kind of evidence, but. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just feel like, <laughs> at that point. Um, the woods or whatever, they just had, like, no fucks given. They were like, I'm leaving, <laughs> yeah. so yeah, I don't I'm out. care. Peace. <laughs> yeah. You know, they never really see- received any letters before any of this. Like, yeah. it was literally just as the Broadduses were starting to move in. <laughs> um, you know, it's just weird that it happened right at that point. Yeah. So, so now everyone goes to the police, so the woods and the Broadduses, um, to show them what they have, like, what evidence. Um. The police decide that it would be best for them not to tell anyone anything. You know, they yeah, want if to you start bringing it, if you start bringing it up, then everybody's people, gonna know. Yeah, exactly. And then people, and then there could be either more people getting involved, or there could be yeah more people trying to get into your business. <laughs> but it's also the thing of only the only people that know what are in the letters is the Broadduses and the Watcher. Yeah, and, and maybe that's the, the only way, that's the only way to get information is and, if something yeah. slips up. Yep, somebody, if somebody you know slips I mean? up and says something that was in the letters. Yeah, or exactly. Know something with the letters. So, you know, for once, state, you know, New Jersey police are doing good. Don't tell nobody nothing. Yeah, don't tell nobody. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's what they decided to do. They don't tell anybody anything. Um, obviously, in the next couple of weeks, they're like, 
the whole family was just suspicious of everyone well, yeah, and yeah. everything. It's, it becomes a game at yeah, that point. It like, is. Now it's like a guessing game. Like, and now I'm paranoid. I gotta figure out who it yeah. is. And well, by because the way, you don't know your neighbors. You don't know yeah, exactly. Everybody, you don't know who you anybody know. is. And by the way, the only reason why New Jersey police was helpful in any way is because they are a richer family, and that's the only reason. Oh yeah, it's that's all about true. getting those props. Yeah, they need their lo- like donation or whatever. <laughs> I'm talking. We're Ugh. talking shit on the police, but that's just because they're 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 yeah. them. I, I've, I've, we're not gonna go into all that because <laughs> I've never met a nice officer. Let's put it that way. My oh, ear, my ear is ringing like crazy. Someone's talking about me hard. Maybe it's the police <laughs> talking shit. <on> maybe, <laughs> maybe they're talking shit on me. They, the, we're, we 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 got what what do they call the little the little um um when they put spy it in cameras. The, no 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 when they put it on your phone. Um, uh, the bugs. Yeah, tap, they, they yeah they they tap, tap the house yeah. and they're 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 listening in and they're, they're like, like oh, these guys are talking crap on us. This, this, this guy this guy's just looking at me, the fat rolls all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so like next couple of weeks they're all suspicious. Um, they have they start keeping an eye on their kids. Um, you know, which honestly me if it, if I was in that position I don't know if I could handle that. More. I don't know if I could handle like. Being at the house and knowing that somebody's watching, somebody's watching my kids. Like, yeah. they went to a, I'm not sure if I put this in my thing, but they went to, like, a barbecue at the neighborhood to, like, kind of meet some people. Yeah. And, like, the mom was just on edge, like, calling her kids, keep them near. Because you don't know who the no, frick it don't. is. And that's, like. And, honestly, I mean, honestly, that that that's, that is paranoia, but at the same time, nobody's going to do something, and, and, and a group of people where you everyone knows though. everybody. I mean, yeah, but... Because there's a lot of kids that disappear in huge public places, yeah, yeah. and then you don't know because yeah. it's a crowd, you know? Um, so, and weird stuff did happen in the following weeks, hmm. such as, one time Derek was giving a tour of the, of the renovation of the house to the couple, mm-hmm. to a, I'm sorry... To a couple on the block, like an older couple, I think it was, and um, the wife said it would it'll be nice to have some young blood in the neighborhood. Now, if you remember, yeah, it was that's what was on the letter. That's what was in the letter, mm-hmm. and my opinion of this is that that's kind of a common saying, young yeah. blood, especially referring to little kids. And yeah. and it's older, you know. This is it's an expensive like mansiony area. Yeah. Um. To me, you know, the house was a million dollars. Um. <laughs> the house was a million dollars. So. <laughs> not a lot of younger people can afford that. Yeah. I mean, these guys were in their like thirties, forties. So I mean, they're younger, but yeah. um, I feel like mostly these houses are gonna stay under one ownership for a li- a while. So this lady could have just been saying like it's nice to see new younger people she yeah. couldn't you know she might not even be referring to the kids she could just mean like you know and i feel like a lot of older people kind of say that too like young blood here you know ho, ho, ho. I, mean, I, I mean i mean i say it sometimes yeah. like I, I mean i'm with me being 30 yeah like i'll say it sometimes i'll be like oh what's up young blood like <laughs> yeah like i mean it's definitely a weird thing to say especially in like the context of what was all going on yeah, yeah. but it could just have been like a weird yeah. coincidence it might not have been sinister i feel like i feel like i feel like if 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 it was like if it got looked into enough like like really really looked into i think it would have been the entire neighborhood like it's like the neighborhood just did not like them because they, they were younger, in and they were yeah, they were they were younger, and they already had that. And I mean, if it was like a bunch of old heads living in that area, they probably just didn't like well, them. That's kind of what I feel like it is. I yeah, mean, like I the could whole be neighborhood. Wrong. Yeah, we, we yeah we could be. It's almost it's almost like a purge situation. Mm-hmm. Like like oh, we do not like this person. We need we're to get them to move them out. out. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why the woods moved. We miss them. They do not deserve this house kind mm-hmm. of thing. Because you know they were I mean? there for twenty three yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. They're so, they're really yeah. well known. They're probably really popular and they're really well liked. Mm-hmm. Now they're moving out, and you have a new younger people moving in that don't belong in that area because it's nothing but older people in the area. Yeah. And it's like, well, who the fuck is this guy? Mm-hmm. Like, well, let's get him the hell out of here. Let's freak yeah. it. Let's 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 uh um, ruffle the feathers a little bit. You know what yeah. I mean? Yep. Let's like see, initiation. Let's see if they can break. <laughs> yeah. Let's see yeah. if they can break almost. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Another weird thing that happened was that a sign that co- that the contractor had put outside and like a big sign mm-hmm. was pulled out of the ground. Um, supposedly, um, it was one of like it was probably one of those like big wooden ones that has like all the permits and information and stuff on mm-hmm. it. Because I think I think in New Jersey you have to have 
like a, a sign that tells you like yeah. what's going on and that you have the right information, you know, the right permits and stuff. Yeah. But that was like literally yanked out of the ground in the middle of the night one night. And so somebody really did not like them yeah. living in period. They didn't like them like changing stuff, no, changing the house. It's only it's it's honestly it's starting to sound like that movie Hot Fuzz. Oh yeah, like, with, with the older um, man who created the cult because he didn't like any change in his the neighborhood. What's called though? Like what's what is it? Um, oh, I don't remember. They had like a a, a saying or a phrase or whatever. And it yeah, was like, yeah, I don't know, I don't know. I could, I mean, I could look it up as you're talking if, if you want. If you want to, yeah. Um, but yeah, it is kind of like hot fuzz where everybody's mm-hmm. lived there for a while and, yeah, and they don't like new, change. They don't like, so they get yeah. rid of it. Yep. <laughs> um, and even I said like my thing is why don't they put up cameras? You're, I'm sure you have. Um, I'm sure there was some kind of security some like system that could have been installed. Yeah. Um, maybe they just didn't have enough time to. Because, <clears throat> you know, they're doing all this remodeling and stuff. Maybe they just didn't have enough time to put security cameras up. But I feel like if your family is going to be living there, you're going to want some kind of safety. Um, so two weeks after the first letter came, a second one arrived. Um, this time, Maria grabbed it, the wife. And uh, she called the police right away. She could tell because she could tell that it was that letter because it had like the big typed words. I forget what it said, but yeah, um, you know, so she knew uh, this letter had way more info on it about the family and the kids. Did you find it? Yeah, I found it. It's apparently it's a it's a chant in Latin, uh, a Latin phrase, bonum commune com- communitatis. Or something like that. Bonum community communitatis. Mm-hmm. It says, which loosely translates to the greater good of the community. The greater good. Yeah, that's yeah, what it the was. Greater the good. greater good. Yeah. That's all they've said. They yeah. are, that's all they said on yep. there. And that, that's what I, I feel like. That's it's it's that kind of situation. Yeah, yeah I could see like, that. Like it's it's old it's old rich people. Like they don't like anything new coming into their I c- place. I could see it. Yeah, it's I could like see it's, it. it was literally everybody. Everybody was messing with them, and yeah. the re- the only reason why. They invited them to the barbecue is so they could say that and freak them out you have more. To be, you know, you have to be nice and polite and stuff. Exactly. Oh, well, that didn't happen at the barbecue. Oh, I thought you said it happened at the barbecue. Well, they had a... Bar- there, so, there were two different occurrences. One was Derek had a couple, like a man and a woman, from the neighborhood come over and look at the renovations of the house. Yeah. And the wife had said, oh, well, it'll be so nice to have young blood around. Yeah, and if they're looking at the renovations and they're saying that they did not like what they were doing to the house, yeah, like, they did then, not like that house changing. <laughs> and then the second thing was that Derek and the whole family and Maria they all went to a barbecue of a different neighbor, I think, yeah. and she kept the mom kept like calling her okay, children yeah, yeah. back. She yeah. just she was like, I felt crazy because I just kept calling them like I wanted them here, I wanted them near me, like yeah. you know, I felt nuts because. They're my kids. I want them here, you know. Yeah, yeah. So that's the two different things. Yeah. Um, so anyway, jumping back to the second letter, uh, this one had a lot more info about the family and the kids specifically. Um, yeah, because they went to the freaking barbecue and now they know a lot more. Yeah. About <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, it started off by saying, again, welcome to the house. Uh, the writer is extremely pissed off about the contractors. Um, huh. Yeah, mentioned- see? Yeah. <laughs> He mentions that he has seen the family bringing in their belongings into the house, like starting the move. Mm-hmm. Um, he even says that the dumpster that's in the front yard is a nice touch. So he's pissed <laughs> off at the fact that yeah. they're changing stuff. That's what I'm saying. It's uh-huh. the, it's the entire community. I guarantee. It's almost like it's almost like us here. They freaking hate us yeah. here. <laughs> and every single time, like like this is a true story, by the way. Literally, they came up with a random reason to come into our house that we did not even schedule yep. because they noticed we were painting and they noticed we were building something. Yeah, they, they our, our apartment complex noticed that we were changing stuff, so they and had they, to come yeah, see. And they, they had to come in and see it in person. Like, yep. And uh, for, for, for reference, like we're free to do whatever we want. Yeah, like, they they said you could do whatever. Nothing, but yeah, they don't, they don't care. They want to know say, what you're doing. Yeah, they, they, just want, they just say, oh, make sure you change it back before you move out, which yep. is what we did back at the old at, at old at our old uh, apartment, apartment complex we painted and we painted yep. it back 
But when we started like hammering and drilling and they seen all the stuff that was coming in and out when I tried doing the whole woodworking thing, yep. like they seen all the stuff coming in and out and all of a sudden, oh, sh you know, I don't, I don't know what's going on. We need we to figure to, out what it we is. We have to come in and inspect something. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, you supposedly you have an outlet that's busted. No, I never reported that for nope. one. Oh, you, 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 there's the chain on your door is broken. Nope. The chain on my door is fine. I don't know why the hell that's a thing either. Yeah, I don't. Like, yeah. <laughs> but I, like I said, I could see people having a problem with them moving in and wanting to exactly. do something about it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, he just sounds so over dramatic about them repairing or replacing stuff. Like it's almost as if it's his house when it's not. Um, then once again, the, the letter starts getting really darker as now the writer proceeds to list out the children's names by birth order and even giving their nicknames. So he's gone as far as to figure out who was born first, second, third, you know. Um, There's probably nicknames. a tap in the house. That's probably how they found all that out. Well, I, know, I also feel like, um, I mean, I don't know. It depends if it's the neighborhood thing. You could probably find out easier by the school records. Oh, yeah, or, most definitely. You know. if, if there was a single teacher at all that works in that area, they're going to yeah. know everything. Or even just being in the neighborhood. The neighborhood barbecue and yeah. somebody asks, oh, how old are your kids? Who, exactly. Who's they this? Heard that. Who's that? You know, uh, like, well, it's well, easy. Does he have a nickname? Like, it's very well, easy. Well, like... the nickname thing is explainable <laughs> because uh, I'm not sure if I, you know, yeah, I did mention it. But, um, so, you know, he goes by nickname and birth order and he said, I am pleased to know your names now and the names of the young blood you have brought me. You certainly say their names often. Which is him referring to all the times that the wife, Maria, yelled their names to get them to come back, like, to the backyard or back back from somewhere. Yeah. So she would use their nicknames a lot. So that's how mm -hmm. he got their, their yep. nicknames, is by being in the neighborhood and hearing her calling them. Yep. So he's around, you know. The letter asks about one child in particular whom the writer has seen using an easel outside, or inside, like, an enclosed porch that they have. Mm. So, they're watching, you know, he's watching from different angles, and I feel like that's the point, too. It's not even just the front of the house. It's like, oh, I can see her over here in this enclosed porch. Like, mm. I'm everywhere. Because um, it's everyone. <laughs> yeah. And it's, the, it's quoted as saying, excuse me, is she the artist in the family? And I would, you know, I would just be so terrified if that was my kids, because, like, there's just so many what ifs as to can ha what happened. Like, if they weren't outside with her at the easel, I don't know how close of, like, eye contact they could have of her. She could have been, you know, kidnapped. Yeah. Outside. Like, you don't you don't know. Yeah. Especially if it is a bunch of people, like, you know. Yeah. But also, um, also, at the same time, if it is a richer area, that probably wouldn't happen just because it is a richer area. Like, normally, like, kidnappings, they don't happen in, like, rich, rich neighborhoods. Well, you don't know. That's they, the they don't, thing they don't is happen you don't in million-dollar houses. I can tell you that much. Well, if this guy's trying to get her ki their kids, I mean, he keeps I, talking I mean, about guess, all this young but... blood and stuff. Like, you know. I guess. Um, then the letter starts getting anxious. Um, he keeps asking, like, I'm going to say he, but no one knows who it is. They keep saying, like, when are you moving in? Which bedrooms will the kids be sleeping in? It's a are man. They... Only men are that creepy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Totally. Um, are the parents going to let them in the basement? The basement is super dangerous. He even says that the basement is so, like, far down that no one can hear you scream. Like, he gets, uh. you know, the definitely the creepy, like, ooh, yeah. you know? Um. The writer wants them to move in so badly so he can start planning. And he, you know, he says that in the letter, and it's like, plan what? <laughs> Nobody knows, but he's going to plan. And then, so then the letter goes on and starts saying, Welcome to the product of your greed. Greed is what brought, brought the past three families to 657 Boulevard, and now it has brought you to me. I mean, sure. Oh. My writing got weird, but I'm not really <laughs> sure what this means. Like, hit their greed. Yeah. Um, I have theories, but it's possibly just twisting this because I'm a writer. <laughs> but I feel like that the the writer is almost the writer of the letters is almost like angry at whoever moves in because maybe it's like They're because how expensive the house. Yeah, is. they can't afford it themselves, so it's like, oh, this yeah. is the product of your greed. Yeah. If people didn't buy it at that much money, maybe they would lower the price. You, uh, you know, know I, I know, I know exactly you know who I, mean? it, I know exactly who it is. 
It's literally it's all the, them millennial. No, no. Oh, no, no, no. It's literally the smallest house on the corner closest to the road, and yeah. then they have all those big houses, and yeah. that one was probably the biggest, so they fucking hated it. But their property, <laughs> their property taxes probably went up or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They moved in, and all of a sudden, their their property taxes skyrocketed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I was so like, they're trying to cause all these issues to bring them down a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But my thing is, is like maybe the whole greed thing is because like. You know, because it's so expensive, it's just a house, essentially. Like, Mm -hmm. so, because it's so expensive and, like, maybe the price tag was it. Like, you had to have this house. Like, there Mm -hmm. could be other reasons, which we're going to talk about. Um, People kind of thought maybe it was someone else who was trying to buy the house. At the yeah, same and they, time, and they, and they outbid them, and they outbid them, which that, that's definitely. And a we're going to talk about that later, but yeah. I just want to like sneak peek kind of thing. Yeah. So, um, especially have to bring up the whole greed thing. Yeah, the greed thing. Um. So it got to the point, obviously, where all of this is way more intense, and they stopped bringing the kids to the house, um, and they were obviously honestly not sure if they wanted to even move in anymore, mm. um. They have the kids that they have to think about and protect. Like, you can't constantly keep an eye on your kids. Yeah. You can't, you can't even keep an eye on your house. Like, you know, yeah. we're in, right now, we're in our bedroom. Anything could be freaking happening right now in the living room. You just yeah. don't know. So, it's like. Don't, don't say that because I'll be, I'll be going out there freaking sweep in the house like I'm <laughs> ex military or something. <laughs> yeah. But, but you know, in hand. <laughs> you know what I mean, though, it's just yeah. a lot of like, what ifs, like you don't know what's going to be, what's going to be the watcher's next, st- you know, next move, next plan. Is he going to ex- escalate from letters? Like you just don't know. Yeah. Um, a few more weeks later and they receive another letter. Um, it says, where have you gone to? The watcher wrote 657 Boulevard is missing you. And, um, I just feel like the, whoever this is, is just fucking with the family hard. And the fact that they've kind of, like, moved out. I mean, they're still doing renovations and stuff in the house at this time. Yeah. But they've kind of, like, moved out. And they're not even really sure what they want to do with it. If they want to keep it, sell it. Either way, they need to finish it. Um, at this point in time, they did actually go and get a security system. Um, <laughs> but they were About time. <laughs> yeah. But there was still that doubt. Like, were they safe? Would their yeah. kids be safe? Uh, could they let them outside freely? Could they actually live their lives? Um, more letters kept coming. They kept getting more and more crazy. Um, I'm just gonna read this part because, like, wow is really all I could say about it. Uh, this guy, whoever the writer is, just starts, like, losing his mind, basically. Um, he says, 657 Boulevard is turning on me. It's coming after me. I don't understand why. What spell did you cast on it? It used to be my friend, now it is my enemy. I am in charge of 657 Boulevard. It is not in charge of me. I will fend off its bad things and wait for it to become good again. It will not punish me. I will rise again. I will be patient and wait for this pass, for this to pass and for you to bring the young blood back to me. 657 needs Boulevard needs young blood. It needs you. Come back. Let the young blood pay, play again like I once did. Let the young blood sleep in 657. Stop changing it and leaving it alone. Yeah. What if the previous owner, like the, the male or... or Woods. One, it, yeah, the, the, one, of the, one of them had like multiple personality disorder. I mean, me. And they, they didn't even realize they wrote the like... They, 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 don't they got a letter it. and they don't remember doing it because it was their other personality. Like it's oh, like that Patric- Johnny Depp movie. Patricia. Yeah. Oh, that was Patricia. It was like that giant debt movie, yeah, or that, or that, um, or that movie. Uh, Split. Was it Split? Yeah. 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 <laughs> like they have it could be. Per- yeah. yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> like, um. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the way that this letter is, uh, there's something definitely wrong with this person. Yeah. Like some sort like, of like mental... play like I used to. Like he could be referring to him playing at you know used to used to yeah. play over at there when he was younger. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like or, multiple personality disorder. And it disorder. doesn't even mean that he lives there. It could be a friend that used to live yeah, there. Yeah, it could and be a friend that used over. to live there. Yeah. Like you know. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> it could be a kid that grew up and like as a friend to whoever lived in that house. Mm-hmm. And, and then like, he slowly... I don't think the Woods had kids, so it wasn't like them. Uh, and, well, yeah, then they, they probably but... grew up together. And they every time, like, every time, like, the Woods moved, that person would move. So that way they would always be close. <laughs> you know 
And Lurk. then once the woods moved away, he couldn't yeah. move away. And then his multiple personality disorder decided to take over, mm -hmm. and now he's losing his mind. I just want to say <laughs> that we're just like yeah, we're, we're going just, we're just off spitballing the deep end. here. <laughs> but but yeah, so this guy is just going off the deep end. I feel like he's just trying to see how far he can like push this family. Yeah. Alarm. <laughs> Alarm. You know, he's just trying to see you know what he can do. Um, so. It was only six months after the letter started, so basically six months they've had this house, mm -hmm. that they decided to turn around and sell it. They don't trust living there, which I could kind of see. Yeah, you have I family. can understand that. You have kids, like, you know, you got responsibilities. You have to figure out what's best for you. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, you let him win. Yeah, that's the <laughs> thing, too. Yeah, um, you, let, you let him win. Like, if, if, if you would have snapped too hard, like, I mean... This is just me, but I mean, this is just me, like, with my mental... Because, like, right now, all he's done is sent letters. Yeah. Well, and pulled up a fence, po or signpost, but... Yeah. It was nature. Nature didn't like... But, <laughs> <laughs> but no, like, like, and this this is just me with my effed up mindset. Like, yeah, I'd be putting my family in danger, but at the very end of it, if he lost his mind enough, I would have never find out who it was. So you won't care <laughs> about me? I'm sure you'd be fine. You're just as paranoid as I am. <laughs> yeah, but like, what about Gypsy and Voodoo? They're our kids. Oh yeah, you're right. What, what like, I would, I would fucking kill. Sorry, cousin, but I would fucking kill somebody if oh, they yeah, messed with my cats. Definitely. I don't, I don't, I don't. Uh, like, I've, I've, I say this all the time. I don't give two shits about people. But if you hurt one of my animals or one of you my pets my or just an animal in general, and I see you do it, I will not hesitate mm -hmm. to castrate you right there in front but of anyway, everybody. Anyway, we're getting distracted <laughs> again. Um, but yeah, so. <laughs> Yeah, but I could, like I said, I could see them, why they want to sell the house at this yeah, point. Like, yeah. I can see it. As much as it, you know, it maybe if they were single, like, maybe if it was just the two of them, like, Maria and Derek, or even if it was just Derek, maybe he would see, like, yeah. what the rest of the story is. But the fact that you're putting innocent kids in the middle of this, mm. like, the kids don't deserve to have to go through this no. just so you could have your million-dollar dream home. Like, it's just not worth it. Yeah. So, um... They eventually, they decided to list the house for more than what they paid due to the re the re renovations. Well, yeah, you have to. Which is normally how it Yeah, that, works, that's how that works. You know? yeah. um, but people were talking. People were making up rumors as to why they hadn't moved in, but they were deciding to sell. Um, because, once again, they weren't supposed to tell anybody anything. So as of right now, everybody thinks that Nothing wrong with this house. It's a perfectly good house. You know, like, yeah. why are these people randomly deciding to move out? Like, good you in the know. community. Huh? For the good of the community. Yeah, for the greater good. <laughs> for the greater good. Yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> you know, they're not supposed to tell anybody. So, they did have people that were interested in buying this house at mm. the more expensive price. Jesus. But, they were worried about the truth. Yeah. Of the rumors. Yeah. Because people were making up shit. You know, mm -hmm. like, oh, someone died in this house. Or, oh, Derek probably murdered somebody. But, you know, I'm just making up shit. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. Um, We're going to take a quick break. And then we'll finish the rest of the story. Okay. So, yeah. So, now we're back. Um, But, yeah. So, they had people that were interested in the house. But they were worried about the rumors. Like, mm -hmm. the truth. Oh, well, you know, because, of course, with them trying to sell the house, they did want to be honest with the potential buyers, you know. Well, they couldn't because the police told them not to say anything. Well, no, they, I think they just kind of went to oh. hell with that. Oh, okay. Because they're trying to sell it at this point now. Yeah. They're like, yeah. it's not really about us trying to figure out who did it. It's, we want to get rid of this yeah. place. So, um, they wanted to make sure that whoever was thinking about buying it... They knew what they were getting into because technically the woods kind of screwed them over with that. Yeah, because they, they didn't did let them get know. that letter. Yeah. I mean, I think they were already going to buy it, so it's not like you know yeah. it happened before. Yeah. But they should have warned them that yeah, that they, happened. They definitely should have warned them. You know, but um, so basically, um, what they kind of would do is if this person was really definitely wanting to buy this. Basically, almost the last step would be, here are the letters. Like, this is why mm -hmm. we didn't move in. Here are the letters. Do you still want to proceed? And most people would back out at that point. Yeah, yeah. And that's kind of how the story leaked out. Is that whoever went to go try and buy it was like, 
oh, there are these letters that, you know, that came out. And this is why, you know. Yeah. So that's kind of how shit broke loose. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and then after it leaked, there was just so much drama and bullshit that went oh, on. I'm sure. I'm sure. Like, I'm not going to go through it all because it's just, it screams stupid New Jersey. Like, I'm sorry, New, New Jersey. Jersey. New Jersey's stupid. I love all y'all, but <laughs> <laughs> we can be stupid, so. Um, we're, we're, we're not talking, I mean, uh, people can be really fucking dumb, too. But we're not. We're not, we're not talking about people. We're just talking about the state is stupid. Well, we, you know, <laughs> people can make dumb decisions. Like, yeah. you know, basically what happened was that, like, kids were scared to walk down this street, which is understandable <laughs> because, like, yeah. The letters were aimed towards kids, yeah. but only specific kids. And, um, you know, people were talking shit on the family saying like, oh, if it was me, I would have stayed in that house and I would have fucked anybody up. You know, typical Ju yeah. Jersey douchebag. Typ yeah, Italian. typical Jersey of me. I'm yeah, because you were like, oh, I'm going to stay. I'm gonna well, see, here's the thing. Bed, I'm, not, I'm not, I'm not, like, the typical Jersey douchebag would have tried yeah. solving it with just his bare hands. That's the typical yeah. stupid Jersey douchebag. Let me mm -hmm. bring let me bring my knuckles to a gunfight. Let's yeah. let's do that. I was bringing gunfight to words. That's what I was doing. Yeah. I was going <laughs> south with it. I was literally going straight friggin' Tennessee, Virginia, Kentucky. <laughs> I was pulling out my double barrel shotgun, Before sitting on the front porch, cleaning it on my rocking yeah, chair, like, waiting for somebody to show up. <laughs> like you could do. That's what you need to do. Like that's the, that's what Derek should have done. Was sat there with a gun, waiting for somebody. <laughs> yeah. Let's see this motherfucker come up yeah. to my mailbox. You know, <laughs> the post guy's just looking at him like, "It's not me, man. <laughs> this is not me. I swear, it's not me." Or, well, he just you just you slowly picking it up, and he's like, "No, no, 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 no." <laughs> he's like, "I'm certified." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I work for the state. You really think I'd fuck up my own job? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, like, you know, there were people that, like, oh, I wouldn't have let the writer win. I still would have moved in. But it's drama. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You're not going to know how you're actually going to feel until no. you're in that specific spot. Uh -huh. Because, like, I can see Derek and Maria's side. Like, I really yeah. can. Like, we, we've witnessed. We've been through some shit like you know, that. I mean, can't. we haven't received letters or nothing. No, nothing but, like that. But... but we've had, you know, we've had some incidents. <laughs> yeah. And I can so. see like being terrified at that. Yeah. So like, I understand, but we, we've had more incidents than what we actually talked about. So. Yeah. And, it, but you know, <laughs> it's just people being dumb, yep. having their own opinion. Exactly. Um, and all this stuff was kind of happening around 2016. Um, and the house has been sitting empty for all this time. They finished the renovations and then just kind of like left. Yeah. Um, until, a family decided that they would actually rent the house. Oh, okay. Um, I was gonna say if 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 I would I would have bought the house and I would have I would have I would have been I would have I would I would have been the greater good of that community. <laughs> I'm the greater good. <laughs> I am justice. <laughs> yeah. But no, they were like, yeah, we'll totally rent it. We, you know, they gave, showed them the letters and like we're we're not worried about that. Mm -hmm. But so it was a family with a bunch of grown children and two big dogs and. So, like, there really wasn't any, like, little yeah. kids to worry about okay. or, you know. Like I said, they maybe. They can handle themselves. <laughs> yeah, like I said, maybe if it was just, like, Maria and Derek, maybe they would have a different feeling about yeah. it. Because yeah. there's no little kids, you know. Yeah, exactly. No innocence, basically. Yeah. Um, And then they did have a clause in the lease that if they did receive another letter and they got freaked out, they could leave. Yeah. And they did get another letter. <laughs> On February 13th, 2016, two and a half late years after the first, like, letter, they get another one. The watcher comes back. And the letter, letter says, now this is, like, really crypt, cryptid. Is it crypt, cryptic? <laughs> I was like, cryptid? That, no, that's a, that's a spooky guy. But, so, crypt, cryptic. <laughs> it says, violent winds and bitter cold to the vile and spiteful Derek and his wench of a wife, Maria. You wonder who the watcher is? Turn around, idiots. Maybe you should. You, maybe you've even spoken to me, one of the so-called neighbors you had no, who had no idea who the watcher could be, or maybe you do know and are too scared to tell anyone. Good move. I walked by the news trucks when they took over my neighborhood and mocked me. I watched as you watch. I watched as you watch from the dark house in an attempt to find me. Telescopes and binoculars are wonderful inventions. 657 Boulevard survived your attempted attempted assault and good strong and stood strong with its army of supporters barricading its gates, the letter read. My soldiers of the boulevard followed my orders to a T. They carried out our, their mission and saved the soul of 657 Boulevard with my orders. All hail the watcher. 
says maybe a car accident, maybe a fire, maybe something as simple as a mild, mild illness that never seems to go away but makes you feel sick day after day after day after day. Maybe the mysterious death of a pet, loved ones suddenly die, planes, cars, and bicycles crash, bones break. Basically, like, he's threatening yeah. them at this point. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so the thing with um, talking about, like, uh, 657 Boulevard survived your attempted assault and stood strong with its army. So basically what happened was, in 2016, because no one was buying this house, Maria and Derek were actually considering tearing down the house and splitting the lot up into two different lots yeah. and building mm -hmm. two different houses. Basically getting rid of it. Yeah. And it got basically to the planning board uh, and stated here. I know a lot about this stuff because I'm a survey. I, live, I work with surveyors. So yeah. I kind of know the basics of like zoning and stuff like that. Yeah. And it got basically to the planning board and they shut it down. So I feel like that's the soldiers of the boulevard following my orders to a T. You know what it is? The neighborhood. Exactly. The money, Everyone was involved. <laughs> the, money, the money of the neighborhood. Everyone was involved. <laughs> because, you know, it would have killed, pro probably would have killed property values and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Like, and that's why the cops never found out who it was, because yeah. you can't arrest the whole town. Yeah, basically. <laughs> like... But, you know. Um, so, yeah, so that's what it kind of means by... Um, uh, 657 stood strong. I'm just going to mm. call it 657. It stood mm. strong, blah, blah, blah. It's basically because they tried to get it torn down. They mm. tried to rebuild their two different other houses. Didn't work. Um, so now they're still stuck with this fucking house. Like, mm -hmm. honestly, I would hate looking at this house if I was like Murray and Derek. <laughs> I would just want to take a torch to it, which no, you, know what you I can't would do. do, but you know. You know, you know, you know what I would do? Huh. If I if I still had this house, I would I would slowly just renovate random things, just to really really. Piss oh, so this I mean, it's off. like the Winchester house where there's like staircases going. Yeah, nowhere I would just I would just do random crap. Doors to it. that open up to nothing. Yeah. Like like I I would like I I would do or I would start be... painting it shitty colors. Yeah, exactly. I would do the most yeah. minuscule thing just so this guy just gets so triggered. The fuck off. Like yeah. I I would I would change the doorknob. I would change the doorknob. I guarantee he would freak out. Yeah. I would paint the door like a bright pink color. Yeah. Really, really get on his nerves. Smiley like, faces. <laughs> but smile. I don't. I don't care faces. about how much money. Like I don't. I, I don't honestly, care. Honestly, every time you paint, <laughs> any time you're painting your house, you're decreasing that property value, especially yeah. if you're doing that kind of shit. Yeah, exactly. Like, like yeah. I would get, I would, I would piss that whole that whole neighborhood off so bad to where they would want to tear it down. Yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then I think that second part where he's talking about like pink plane crashes, blah blah blah. I think that's basically him like wishing death on them. Yeah. Like yeah. if I don't do it, this this all this bullshit will happen too. Yeah, yeah. So, so they went they went to the police with this letter too, but once again, no proof. Like you can't do anything. Uh, There's, well, well, not only that, the police know. are probably involved. What do you well, want to do? Yeah. But it's a sheriff. <laughs> I, I could see that with state police. Oh, oh yeah, New Jersey, Jersey, Jersey police. Jersey police yeah. Like a lot of like Jersey police are so fucking crooked. It's on all of them are. But anyway, I mean not all of them. <laughs> no, not, 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 not some, some of them are really fucking no. cool. Some of yeah. them are really good dudes. But, but like eighty percent of majority, Jersey police are yeah. fucking corrupt. <laughs> um, and and honestly, at this point, there are so many suspects. The letters are so vague. My neighborhood that could be literally freaking anybody yeah. in the neighborhood. Exactly. Like you know. Um, <laughs> Go to the oldest house yeah. on that lot, the oldest family that lives in that neighborhood, and I guarantee you, you will find the exact printer with that exact ink that you can scan to find out where the ink came from. It's we're going to talk about that. Okay. <laughs> kind, not the printer's ink oh, okay, stuff, okay. but we're going to talk about like the house. Yeah. Um. So, eventually, I think in 2019, they did end up selling the house. Um. I do have the people's names here, and it's really easy to find. If you go on um, Zillow... I think, or any, if you go on anywhere, you can see who did it, but I just won't mess, mention their names. Yeah, I was um, gonna say, don't worry about that, you know. The, so, but they did end up selling the house. shit right now. Yeah, oh yeah, because I yeah. think they still own the house, so they're going through some shit. Yeah. Um, they did buy, so and so and so and so bought the house in 2019 at, um, and I'm trying to figure out how to explain this, uh, Derek and Maria got like a four hundred thousand dollar loss so like they put it up for the 1.3 million and then Ooh. it was less than that basically oh, okay. so th even yeah. with all their renovations and stuff they yeah, got they lost it because of what was going yeah. on yep yeah. um and 
blah, 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 blah. Still own the house to this day. Still live in it. And I said enjoy it from what we know, but maybe not right now because of all the bullshit with the TV show, yeah, yeah. you know? Like, um, like, honestly, with, like, with Derek, uh, that was a previous owner, right? Yeah. With him, like, if he had enough money to buy that $1.3 million house and then be able to move into another house that's probably literally around the same bracket, like, at that point, you don't need I to don't worry know. about getting your money back. Well, I mean, either way, at that point, you don't even need to worry about getting your money back. Like, if you can go from a $1.3 million to another $1.3 million within the course of a couple of weeks, you don't need to fucking worry about How, money. But, I mean, obviously, <laughs> you want to get your money Well, yeah, I mean, like, you do, like, but, like, you know. at the same time, it's like, I didn't lose it. I was able to get a house again. Like, yeah, I guess. <laughs> um, and these people that did buy the house, like, in 2019, I think they did receive a letter or two. Mm. Um, but they didn't release any information about it. I mm. think they did. From what I couldn't really find any info about it, but I'm pretty sure that they did. Yeah. Um, but they didn't. You know, they didn't release anything on it. I think they probably just did the same thing as the woods and toss it in the trash. Mm. So it kind of makes me wonder if the Broadduses had just like ignored it and like tossed it away, if the watcher would have went away. Maybe I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, uh, but I feel like. That might have just happened. Yeah, because because maybe because he was getting the, he was getting a thrill. He yeah, was getting a he thrill getting out of watching them freak out. Like and like you don't give him like that thrill. Even, guess what? Yeah. You know? Even from day one, when Derek first got that letter, he was freaking out. He probably watched as Derek flicked off all the lights yeah, and yeah. was stuck in behind windows. His and, dick was getting hard. Yeah, he was getting really yeah, happy about it. He was getting it. excited <laughs> about seeing that, and he's like, "Finally, I have somebody to fucking to that, mess that with. I can mess with." It's almost yeah. it's almost like um you remember that Keen that Keen Peel skit which if you guys don't know what Keen Peel is it's freaking hilarious but you know remember that Keen Peel skit that I showed you about the clown in the torture room where he was sitting yeah. there trying to torture Key and Peel but they were yeah, like, they, they were, were just, just complimenting all, him they were, they yeah were they like, they were all you're for doing it such a great job. you're doing such a good job like 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 <laughs> my my, <laughs> my arm looks so real or yeah what, like know, my whatever. leg don't even miss it I, I'm not it's not even my dominant leg my left leg is my dominant leg yeah you want I, me to cut yeah. it off for you like it's like that. Like, mm -hmm. that psycho killer is not getting his thrill, so he's just yeah. like, I'm done with the world. So, if like, they, I mean, I mean, we don't know. Yeah, we don't know, he but... He could have kept going, but... Yeah. You know. So, now we're going to kind of talk about possible suspects who maybe have done it, mm -hmm. because, officially, the Watcher has never been found. Mm -hmm. No one knows who did it, you know. Yeah. Um, they did try to find their best, you know, they, they tried their best to find out who it was, but... No, you know, no. <laughs> um, they did have certain suspects. So now we're going to jump back to where you were kind of talking about, um, the printer, like the printer and like the oldest person that lived there kind of thing. Mm. Um, we're going to talk about the Langfords. Um, people liked to call them odd, but they were still really nice people all the same. I'm sure they are really nice people. Yeah, yeah. Jersey people are once again are dickheads, so anybody yep. that's slightly different than you are is odd. Yeah, so yeah. um you had Peggy Lanford, who was in her nineties, and she lived with a sub with several of her um adult children. Was her husband's name Hank? I don't know. <laughs> Peggy, because of like uh King of the Hill. Yeah, King of the Hill and yeah. Hank. <laughs> and <I'm going laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, sorry. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't mention her uh, husband. I think he mm. passed away. Oh, okay. But, um... His she, oldest son named Bobby. <laughs> she lived with several of her adult uh, kids. Mm -hmm. Um, They were all in their 60s. Um, Jeez. One, yeah, so they're, I mean... <laughs> that's like, an old-ass family. That's why I said it's old money, yeah, old family. Yep. Old like, money, old you family, know. Yep. Um, and then one person in the family people seem to focus on a lot was Michael. Because Michael didn't work, um, he was described to have a beard like Ernest Hemingway, which I don't know what that looks like. I'm assuming it's like really long and, yeah, you know. I'll look him up. Yeah. It sounds really familiar. For and um, he was he was always like compared to Boo, Boo Radley, which if you don't know what that is, <coughs> let me die for a I know. minute. No. Ernest, Ernest Hemingway is like, his, his beard is like your typical. Like long and scraggly and. No. No? Oh, okay. Like your typical full face beard. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's it's, like, it's somewhat bushy, but it's not it's not too long, not too ridiculous. It looks nice, actually. Yeah, it's it's kind of trimmed up. It's like up. cut nice. It's yeah. face shape. You know what I mean? Hmm. It's shaped up to the face. Yeah. Okay. So that was different than what I thought it was. Yeah. But um, so he was always compared to Boo Radley, which if you don't know who that is, 
Um, it's a character from the book To Kill a Mockingbird. And, um... It looks like a friggin' a black and white movie druggie. Huh? You read me? He looks like a druggie. Oh, you looked him up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but he's described as the literal and symbol- symbolic, like, description of invisibility. Um, basically he's someone who keeps to himself, he doesn't talk to anyone, he stays at his house, um, like I said, he doesn't have a job, so, um, there's literally nothing wrong with that, but because, which happens in the story to kill a mockingbird, um, but because people think that's weird, the Langfords somehow ended up being suspects. Hmm. Like, because they were... They kept to themselves. They were quiet people. Oh yeah, like, not everybody wants to go and socialize, guys. Like, well, see, here, here's the thing. That's like, that's like a common. That's a common thing around the world. Like mm-hmm. me, when in high school, I was the quiet kid. Guess yep. who they picked on the most? The quiet kid, because they found it weird. How come you're not talking to fifty million freaking people and creating a massive circle where you can't trust anybody, no matter what? Yeah, like it, <laughs> like, it just. It's sad, but that's how the world works. I know. It's 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 popularity and socialism. Yeah. That's all it is. So, that's, how, that's the only way to get anywhere in the world is being popular and being social. Yep. So, the Broadus family does believe that this is Michael. Like, I feel like since day one that he became a, sus- a suspect, and I'm using air quotes with that, yep. that they just straight up believed it was him. I mean, it could be him. I'm not, you know, but I'm it's, not going to say It's almost like the one podcast that you were talking that, that one podcast you were talking Mr. Crowley or whatever. Mr. Crowley. Yeah. Um, he was that. No, that that one where, where they automatically assumed it was the weird guy because he was weird. They automatically assumed it. The the guy who was like mentally handi- like slightly mentally handicapped. You well, were, I don't know. <laughs> it, it was literally one of your past podcasts. It's either that or we haven't uploaded it yet. Yeah, I know who you're talking about now. Andre yeah. Rand. Yeah, yeah. The guy he with did the, end up doing it. Yeah, but I know, but they, they like, automatically assumed, assumed because, because he was, was the weird yeah. guy. Like, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, now I know. I thought I thought you were talking about one that I like listened to. No, no, no. And I was like, I don't remember that. <laughs> but yeah, okay. So I mean, there is some. I'm gonna like once again use air quotes. Mm. There is some like compelling evidence that he may be the writer, but you know, you never know. Um. So for one thing, the Lang Langford house was right next to. Um, the the porch with the easel, you know, remember mm. the kid was painting. So it's kind of yeah. like right next to that area. Yeah. So it's easy for him to have seen the little girl or boy, I'm not sure who was out there. Yeah. The little kid painting. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, I guess that's a good point. But depending on where that porch is, so could probably a bunch of other people. You oh, know yeah, what I mean? Most definitely. Yeah. Um, so the Langford family had lived there since the 1960s. Which is when the Watcher's family, the father, the father of the Watcher now, um, had begun observing the 657 Boulevard. The only thing is that it said that his father was watching the house too. So how was he watching the house if they didn't move in until the 60s? Yeah. <clears throat> Unless it was kind of like, a, I drive by that house sometimes and see, <laughs> you know. Could be. So, oh, here you go. It does mention the father. I forgot. So, Richard Langford, the family patriarch, which is father, mm-hmm. um, he died 12 years earlier than all of this took place. Mm-hmm. And the current watcher claimed to have been on the job for the better part of two decades. So, I mean, it kind of lines up. Because, like, better part of two decades is 20 years. Yeah. So, it kind of lines up, like, timeline. Like, maybe the father was showing the son, Michael, you know, we'll say, how to be the watcher and how to send the notes and stuff. Maybe. Before he died. But I feel like that's just, you know, a little bit, you know, circumstantial evidence is what it's called. Um, They kind of just threw a person... (coughs) (coughs) <coughs> Sorry. They just kind of like randomly threw a person in and said, oh yeah, this kind of works, like the timeline matches. Mm-hmm. Um, but you could probably do that to a bunch of people in the neighborhood. Yeah. Um, people people have done yeah. that throughout history. Yeah. But like I said, <laughs> once again, this, ho- this neighborhood is like old rich. Mm. 
So there's plenty of old rich people living there yeah. that have probably <laughs> been living there since the 60s. Yeah. Like, I feel like this area is kind of like a generational thing. You yeah. know, you just don't know. Um, 90% of my family members. Are so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and I did want to point out that the Broadduses actually hired some really important people to look at this case. Mm-hmm. I thought it was really interesting. So they did, like, try and do their work. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure at what point. I'm sorry if my coughs start getting worse. I've been talking for, like, over an hour. So <laughs> that's why. Um <laughs> This is probably the most that I've talked in, like, the past two weeks <laughs> from being sick. Yeah. So Derek reached out to former FBI agent who served as inspiration for Clarice Starling in Silence of the Lambs. Oh. Yeah. He, oh, he's, wow. he, he reached out to her. And then he also reached out to a, a man named Robert Linehan, who was a former FBI agent, um, to conduct a threat assessment. Huh. Um, so basically what Lenahan did was he studied the letters and he actually recognized some really cool stuff um, that him to him it pointed to be an older writer. Which mm. makes sense, once again, with Michael because he's in his 60s. Yeah. You know, could also be the mom too. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so um, some of the things that he pointed out was that it was addressed to Mr. and Mrs. Broadus, um, you know, which is obviously a thing that People, you know, a lot of people do, but, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, it also begins with, like, including the day's weather. Excuse me. Um, because it talks about being warm and humid or sunny and cool for a summer day. Um, something that people really don't do now. They kind of just get, like, right to the point. Yeah. Um, like, I don't say, like, hey, how's it going? How's the weather? It's nice and sunny over here. Like, you know, people just don't really talk like that anymore. Um. Younger kids, you know. And that, hell, no. Like, <laughs> Back in my it's, day. It's, it's no longer like Mr. and Mrs. Like, what's up, cuz? Like, what's up, bro? Like, yeah. like hey, yo, hey, you, 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 uh, you Lisa's father? Are yeah. you okay? Yeah, you're I'm, just, I'm stuttering. You're like, you, you, uh, it's <laughs> a, it's a, you, you Lisa's father? Yeah, what, what's your name? Call me Mr. So-and-so. Nah, I'm gonna call you bro. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like, that's how it is nowadays compared to before. It was very proper, like, Mr. and Mrs. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, you shook people's hands. You yeah. Them. <laughs> and then, and then another thing that he noticed was that the sentences had double spaces in between them, which, since like lately I've been diving into writing a lot more, like double me spacing. Personally. Yeah. I know. I know. When I was in high school, double spacing was a huge thing. Like you yeah, had the, you were you, supposed to school, after, you had the double space. Yeah. Yeah. But. That's something that's kind of, like, gone out of fashion. Like, I know as a writer now, you're not supposed to do that. Yeah. Like, they actually, like, hand you back your work and be like, get rid of these. Um, But that was something that was a big thing way back when. Yeah. And um, all all of this and a lot more stuff led Lanahan, Lanahan, excuse me, to believe that this writer was probably in his 60s. Mm -hmm. So, Michael. (coughs) Excuse me. So... We're going to kind of jump back to the possibility of the mul- multiple offers on the house when the Broadus has bought it. Um, there were also a lot of theories that the writer, the letter writer, might have been someone who was trying to buy the house at the same time as the Broadus's. Yeah, yeah. Um, Which is what you brought up. But the, yeah, but they got outbid by the family. Mm-hmm. Um, it was said that there were multiple offers on this house that were way above the asking price. So the one point three million was the highest bid out yeah. of all of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, I feel like this is probably the most likely thing that happened is that the li- the writer like emphasizes so much on the fact that they're destroying like the house, the property. They're getting rid of the old bones of the history of the house, and I just think like. You know, um, if it was a interested buyer that they wanted to snatch it up, like, as soon as possible to keep that history, you know what I mean? Yeah. But they got outbid by the Braddises, so, um, you know, they're basically watching, like, their dream home, this 
pre- yeah, this other buyer. Yeah, destroyed. Yeah, yeah you know what yeah, I mean? Wrecked. Like it's al- it's almost like it's almost like with that dream home that yeah, you had. Yeah, that that's dream home we had. Like if if you were if you were literally next door and you watched these people completely tear down half yeah. a house, you'd be so pissed off. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like you see them like destroying like for example, like the wood floors that you loved, them putting like fucking linoleum or some yeah, shit. Yeah, linoleum over it. tile. Like. <laughs> yeah, like um shag know. carpet. <laughs> um yeah, you know what I mean? Like but my thought was <clears throat> if someone did want to buy this house uh I mean, yeah, I'm thinking about it now, but if someone did want to buy this house and the Braddises outbid them, why didn't they buy the house after the Braddises put it on market? But the Braddises already destroyed the house, according to them anyway. Yeah, yeah. So it wouldn't even look like what it did before they bought, you know, before they faced it up. Nope. So maybe they didn't like the house anymore. Maybe. You know, that, that was my thing. Um, yeah. At the end of all this, we still really don't know who wrote the real web. Ooh. <laughs> We still don't know who wrote the letters or why. Um, there's really no real reason to target the Bradises. You know, there's just no reason. Um, but someone, but for someone that is willing to sit and write all their letters, I don't really see them needing, like, a full-blown reason. Like, yeah. as crazy and as dark as they went, I don't see them needing, like, I need this reason or this this. No, you honestly, know I, mean? I could send a I could send like a random set of letters to somebody mess that lives with here somebody. just to mess with them. Yeah. Like. Like. You don't need a reason. There's 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 a, there's a quote in uh, the Batman movie with Heath Ledger <laughs> where he plays as a Joker, and the the very end of the quote I don't know the I don't remember the entire thing something about a, a thief stealing jewels or something like that mm-hmm. I don't know, but at the very the very last part of the quote was some men just want to watch the world burn. <laughs> no reason they just want to watch it burn yeah like <laughs> i could see this happening with this this family like if it was somebody that was outbid i could see them getting really pissed off at them destroying it so it's like yeah. i'm gonna mess with yeah, exactly. you know so and so um so that's that's basically the story of the watcher um as promised here are some key quotes from the letters <laughs> um, I think this was the first letter. It says, 657 Boulevard has been the subject of my family for decades now, and as it approaches its 110th birthday, I have been in charge of watching and waiting for its second coming. My grandfather watched the house in the 1920s, and my father watched in the 60s. It is now my time. Do you know the history of the house? Do you know what lies within the walls of 657 Boulevard? Why are you here? I will find out. Do you need to fill the house with young blood? I, do you, yeah, I, I don't understand uh-huh. this part, but it says, do you need to fill the blood or to fill the house with the young blood I requested? Better for me. Was your old house too small for a growing family? Or was it the greed to bring me your children? <coughs> Once I know their names, I will call to them and draw them to me. Which is crazy. Like, yeah. um, 657 is anxious for you to move in. It has been years and years since the young blood ruled the hallways of the house. Have you found all the secrets it holds yet? All the windows and doors in 657 Boulevard allowed me to watch you and track you as you move through the house. Wow. I pass by six. I, I pass by many times a day. 657 is my job, my life, my obsession. I will rise again. I will be patient and wait for this to pass and for you to bring the young blood back to me. 657 needs the young blood. You know what I just thought of? Huh. What if, what if the dude who was freaking out was part of the family that built that house? That's what I thought too. Because like he's but getting pissed off at all. Like he's watching his hard work get destroyed. Get, maybe he got kicked out somehow. Like I don't maybe. know the actual history of the house. Because I'm looking at the house right now because one of the it's articles. It's pretty, right? Yeah, like one of the articles just popped up on Facebook about yeah. like people getting aggravated that people yeah. are driving by and stuff yeah. like that. And I can see to where you can literally see everything because there's a shit ton of windows on this mm-hmm. place that you can literally see the entire house just by standing in front of it. Like you can. Yeah, you. Can I know. Look for, right I know in. from being a meter reader. 
when there's houses with a lot of windows, you see everything. Yeah. Like, you can see through the entire house. Yep. Like, I've seen people's kitchen table set setups without even looking directly at Not even trying to look. Just be like, oh, shit. You like, know? I, I, I'll casually walk by a window, and I know there, I know they have, a, they have a table with a friggin' a centerpiece that's got fruit in the bowl. Like, I yeah. just by looking by, because... You you, you, just, you see it all. You yeah. can see clean through, and this this is the this is actually looks like a lot of the kind of houses that I read the meters at, and with the, like even if he were even if he did pose as a meter reader, he could get so much information mm-hmm. just from doing that, yep. just from being a meter reader. Because like I said, like a lot of the times on these houses, like don't the, pose being a meter reader. No, well, I mean that people <laughs> people have been doing that over in yeah, but you're um, not supposed to. No, no, you're not. But people were doing that over in Hamilton and getting yeah, like, breaking in, yeah, and getting a lot of freaking trouble for it because they're idiots. But um, but yeah, like like it looks like from where the wires are, the meters on the left side of the house. From what I'm looking at, and just the left side of the house, as you're walking up that driveway, you can see in the entire left side of the house because mm-hmm. the windows. And I'm assuming the gas meter is either on the right side of the house. Or <laughs> Or on the front, because that's how a lot of these houses mm-hmm. are set up. So if you if you go to the front, you can see the entire building. If you go to the right, you can mm-hmm. see the entire building because you're scaling it as you're walking by. Yeah. It is not that hard to like... Or, I mean, you don't necessarily even need to act like anybody. The no, house you is don't. empty. Yeah, the house is there empty. There were no security cameras or anything. Exactly. You can walk right up to the house, peek in the windows, whatever. Yeah, like, like, like that dream house that we were talking about. Mm-hmm. Like, I had walked up to the house and I took photos of the inside. Yeah, so I mean, it had it for sale. Like. Yeah, it was for but... sale. But once again, you can do that. Nobody's going to say nothing. We weren't creeping in anybody's windows. No, no, we weren't. <laughs> no. But, like, nobody's going to say nothing. They're just going to think, oh, he's probably yeah. just curious about the house. Yeah. Like, you know. nobody's going to say anything, you know? Yeah. It's very easy. <laughs> yep. Like, the people, like, like there's also a lot of houses I walk by that have, like, security systems. And, like, now, like, a lot of security systems, they actually give warnings that they're being recorded. Yeah. Like, there's quite a few houses. It's like, hello, you are being recorded. And, then, and that's what I hear oh, really? a lot. <laughs> yeah. Or you are now being recorded or whatever. Yeah. And they'll record you doing it, but they also have, like, the doorbells that have the cameras on. Which yeah, you the see rain only, camera or whatever. Only the front. But still, at the same time, like, you could you could be somebody jogging by, and if your blinds are up, you can see clear through that I house. mean, it's just, you know, it's just, it happens. It's a yeah. window. Like, yeah, like, you, you know? can see clear. Like, this apartment complex, you can't see clear <laughs> through everything. The windows are up too high. Like yeah. I'm six foot and I have to stand on my tippy toes to look in. Like you're not gonna, yep. you're not gonna see. All I see, all I see is the ceiling when I'm looking mm-hmm. at when I'm looking at it. All I see is the ceiling. That's it. <laughs> like, <Yep. laughs> wait, um, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. Um, so like another quote is, "Will the young blood play in the basement, or will, or are they too afraid to go down there alone? I would be very afraid if I were them." Oh. <laughs> I'm dying. Stop it. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, look, look, It is far away from the rest of the house. If you were upstairs, you would never hear them scream. Will they sleep in the attic, or will you all sleep on the second floor? Who has the bedrooms facing the street? I'll know as soon as you move in. It will help me know who is in which bedroom. Then I can plan better. Is that the end of that one? One more. Okay. <coughs> And then it says, have a happy moving in day. You know I will be watching. Just like so uh-huh. messed up. Yeah. So looking at the house, because I also used to do house clean outs Quit as a job. Quit being a weirdo. Sorry, I'm, not, I'm not being a weirdo. <laughs> I'm stating like statistical mm-hmm. things. Looking at the house, I've cleaned out quite a few houses that pretty much look almost exactly like this. And, well, not cleaned out, but like as they were being built, I've gone into the basement and cleaned the floors. Mm-hmm. You, you would you would you would definitely hear somebody screaming from that basement. So that was just him just being fucking stupid. I feel like all like of it's, it's just the, him the literally being literally stupid. like the basement is the ceiling is it's about an eight foot ceiling. It's about the size of our ceilings right now. Yeah, I mean it's, it's a regular basement. Ceiling. It's not Yeah, like and unless you have a complete soundproof door, you can hear them scream through the floorboards. Like mm-hmm. it's not gonna be hard. These 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 cookie cutter houses, they're not built very structurally sound. Like, even, I mean, back well, in the it's day... 19, 1909. Yeah. Well, back in the day, like, the wood was a hell of a lot more dense. Mm-hmm. And it was actually a lot bigger. Like, 2 by 4s were actually 2 by 4s yeah. not, like, 2.8 and, like, 4.3 or, or 3 less. point... Or, yeah, yeah. That's all less. Yeah. Or... But back then, 2 by 4s were literally 2 by 4 Like, they were 2 inches by 4 inches. Yeah. And they're thick. They're made of oak. Mm-hmm. So, like, they were, they were tough. You couldn't... So, that, that would somewhat solidify it. And I know that just because yeah. the house, that one house that my mom lived in... 
was an old ass house and the yeah. floor was just straight up thick oak boards. That's all it was. Mm -hmm. But you can still hear people talking in the basement. Yeah, I mean, like you can communicate that way very easily. Unless it's down like a, a tunnel or some <laughs> yeah. shit. Plus, you're plus still all the pipes, like the sound is going to reverberate through yeah. the pipes. Like it's going to vibrate, and you're yeah. going to hear it just from that. It like, was just him. It was just yeah. him fucking with him. Yeah. That's all. Like even my even my grandmother's old mm -hmm. house. She had a twelve foot ceiling in her basement. Her ceiling was really deep, and the basement steps were really mm -hmm. steep going down. But you could still hear everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like there's no way that you would not hear it. You know. Yeah. <laughs> so. That's pretty much the story of the Watcher. Um, there's still a lot more information that I just had to cut out. I mean, we're basically almost at like two hours here. Um, so I suggest going and reading the article that I read. It's 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 on the Cut. Um, it's a website called the Cut. Um, I'm gonna leave the website link on YouTube. So if you're listening on Spotify, go check out my YouTube channel. Um, the author uh, named Reeves Weidman. Weidman, sorry if I said that wrong, um, he actually sat down with Derek and Maria and actually talked to them about it and got their full side of the story. Yeah. Um, there was something really interesting that I wasn't going to mention, but I will because it was really cool. Um, <laughs> as, as Reeves was talking to Derek, um, I guess other people started getting letters oh, yeah? in the same style as The Watcher. Hmm. <laughs> excuse me like people in the neighborhood were getting letters like that and somehow Reeves got Derek to break down and it turned out it was actually him sending those letters in anger after like after getting his own letters he was like pit, pit, almost like pissed off trying to find out who like yeah, his yeah. suspects or whatever maybe yeah. but he was sending the letters Hmm. sending other letters and that just kind of made me suspicious of him yeah. because as far as we know no new letters have come into this new family and the only time that the letter came in with the woods is when the broadises were moving in so to me that just shows like so many red flags like I, i'm not saying they did it but it also doesn't like help their case either. No, no, it does not. So, anyway, go definitely go check out the cut. Like his um his article was really interesting. It's like full of content. Like just just go read it. Um, but yeah. So what do you think, Alan? Would you have still? Excuse me. Would you have still stayed in the house if this was you? If I had kids, probably not. But if it yeah. was just me or if it was just you, yeah. If it was just us? Oh, yeah. I would have stayed in. I, w I would have. What about the him. cats? Like, I, I would worry that the cats would get hurt. That's me. Yeah. Well, see. Unless we could bring them, like, over to your mom's or something like that. Yeah. Like, well, if they're in the process of, like, moving. The cats not, are still over at the apartment, Yeah, the apartment, cats are still over at the other place. Yeah. So, I mean, process of moving, we would have been perfectly fine. When the cats did get there, we would have had to worry about them. But at the same time, I would have been to the point of paranoia to where I probably would have boarded up the windows. And yeah, just so like... there's no reason to move in then, because you're boarding up windows well, and I, shit. Well, no, the, I'm moving in because it's my dream house. Just because I have boards on my windows doesn't mean I don't want to live there. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I'd, I'd put boards on the windows in this apartment if I really wanted to. If yeah. I didn't want to see the outside, guess what? Board it up. Yeah, <laughs> like, I guess. Like, if, if I really, if I wanted to sneak around as much as possible, like, I would board up the windows first thing in the morning. Do what I need to do, and, and it, I would be a temporary, you know, yeah. just like, just like nail it on a little bit, or just screw it on for like temporary, so you can't see shit. And I would do whatever I need to do. You could just do. do like a shutter system where it exactly. just flop, like flips over. Or exactly, something. you could do that, yeah. And I would do whatever I need to do, so he has no clue what the yeah. hell I am doing in that house. Yeah, I would board I up every window. I would set up as but, much shit as I possibly can, and then, then again, unboard it all, and then he would have no clue. But again, but then again, you're also kind of like feeding into him exactly so it That's could make point. him do it do more stuff for yeah no exactly reason. i know you but, could so, just ignore it yeah well yeah, yeah you could just ignore it but if you're threatening my my peace my dream yeah. you're threatening that you are literally threatening me at this point and that is that's that's warfare. Like you mm -hmm. don't you don't threaten me. Yeah. And then don't threaten me with a good time. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So like I would literally board up all the windows, set up what I need to set up, get all the security cameras set up. He would have no clue where any of them are. Mm -hmm. No clue whatsoever. Yeah. I would board up everything. 
right? And I would, I would do all of that. I would, huh? Let him be blindsided. Exactly. Basically. I would set up wire, not wire traps, but like wire things, like how we did with the shoelace on the door, yeah. Yeah. because we thought somebody was coming in and out of our apartment. I would do something like that, shoelace on the door, mark where it was, and then find out if it got knocked down, if somebody had walked in, if I didn't have my camera set up. That way I would know, yes, yeah, somebody's been in here because the shoelace isn't where it was supposed to be. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and I would also, um, like, have fake security cameras and stuff. Yeah. So, like, if something happened to it, like, I would have the fake security camera, and I'd have the real one somewhere else, like, yeah. hidden. And then if something happened to the fake one, you can watch the real one and see what happened. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, this dude would be so confused by my tactics, it'd be yeah. unreal. Like, I would I would blindside the shit out of him. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Like, I would, like, that. that's just, like, I said, if that started happening here, that's exactly what I would do. I would yeah. go to Home Depot, buy some plywood, board up the windows, set up as much as I need to set up, take the boards down, and just wait. Yep. Yeah. At that point, like, once I get set up, it's a waiting game. And I, and it's like playing chess at that point. I would set up a camera, <laughs> like, pointed right at the mailbox and just record that mailbox all day long. I mean, he'd probably notice you doing that because well, it's not on the mailbox. Not if you can't find the camera. Yeah, but if he's watching you set up the camera, he's going to Well, if he does it, it, though. Oh, I mean, you don't know if he does, though. That's yeah, the thing. Yeah, yeah. You need to be able That's to That's the thing. Is you have no idea when he's watching, when he's not. What if exactly. he has a camera on you 24 seven? Exactly. Like... He, there could be a camera that he set up somewhere in the house that you would not know about. Yeah. But... I would know about it because I'd be searching every fucking thing. Like if oh, it's yeah. an empty, if it's an empty ass house, I'm checking the vents, I'm mm -hmm. checking all the lights, I'm checking the alarm clocks, I'm checking the mirrors, I'm checking all of that yeah. because it's very, very easy to hide a camera behind a two way mirror. Very oh, yeah, easy, yeah, yeah. very, very easy. <laughs> so, do you do you have any idea who you would think would be responsible? I, I still think it's the whole neighborhood. I don't think it's Michael. No, I, I, don't, I don't. I don't think. think I don't think him. it's one specific There's person. There's just no like. Well, like, you know, I don't see there being a lot of evidence towards him. No. I mean... If if anything, I don't think I don't think it's the oldest family, just because they're kind of just set in their ways. So there's they're like, just it, there. You know, yeah, they're just there. But the newer people that are coming in with, with how everyone's brain is now... Well, and also it's an old... Like, the whole... <coughs> Westfield is like an old town in general. Yeah. So, like... Them changing stuff. It, it's just like I feel like it is the whole town too. Yeah. Like you were saying, it's it's either the, it's either there. There's two possible options, right, or three possible mm -hmm. options in my head. Either one, it is the whole the whole neighborhood, just not the older family. They probably have nothing to do with it. Or probably don't know what the fuck is going. I mean, they could be. Who knows? You know. They control everything, so that could be it. They're you know that's their domain pretty much. Mm -hmm. It's either the whole neighborhood, or two, it's the sheriff. Because the sheriff would know everything that's going on because it's getting reported. You know, everything. everyone knows yeah. everyone. The sheriff is probably best friends with a lot of people there. Because I don't it's think money. it's, like, him specifically. Because no, he I mean, has no, like... Well, you know, either, I'm no saying, like, the cops are involved. Like, yeah. the cops probably have something to do with it. Or three, it's the people who built the house. It's the family that built the house. Yeah. Like, if they're getting that pissed off over the renovations, and, like, especially with the whole quote, like, 657 is my life, it's my life's work. Yeah. Like, that's just, like... What's him referring to the fact that he's been yeah, but told what, to what if, the house? What if he spent his whole life building the perfect house and somebody comes in and is just completely redoing it? It's almost like... What if the house... Was, what if his father was like the architect of the that's house? That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. It's his, his life's work. Or whatever. Yeah. Like, and like, it's, it's, it's like getting going to a tattoo artist, having them do the best job they can... And then bringing them with you to another tattoo artist to go over that thing. Yeah. It's going to piss them off so bad yeah. that they put that much effort into it. And now you're just covering it up. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, it's, it's, I feel like it's that kind of situation. Like, to it's me, like the builder. Yeah. You know? To me, I think it's an angry buyer. I, f I, I, I could, feel well, like yeah, it's that, somebody. I, I forgot yeah. about that. Yeah, that could, yeah. That could be a I thing. I feel too. like it's somebody that yeah. really wanted that house and either A, couldn't afford it. Yeah. Or B, got outbid, yeah. or, you know, whatever the reason is that they couldn't get in yeah. that house. So, four possibilities. <laughs> yeah. And they just started writing these letters because they're pissed off at the fact that they couldn't get this house. Yep. Like, to me, that's, like, the most logical possibility. You know, you know what I just thought about? Huh. That could be a huge fucking twist. I mean, I'm not, this isn't to put shame on the family that moved in. But what if... What if it was them? Yeah. I could be, but there's no what, reason to. No, but they got outbid, first of all. They wanted that house to begin with, and they got outbid. Who? 
I'm, I'm saying like the people that moved in. Like this is just a theory. The, the new Broaduses people didn't. No, the new people. Oh, you mean the ones that bought it in 2018? Yeah, the, yeah. Okay. when it was when it was drastically lower than mm-hmm. what it initially was. Yeah. Because they could afford it at that yeah. point. You know what I mean? You know what I'm trying to say? I mean, I don't. I don't think like I don't think that was like said that they tried to buy the house before. No, no but like who? It, yeah, but no one's gonna say that. Yeah, exactly. So like, what what if it was like? That's what possible. if it was like the new owners? And they were originally bidding on that house. They mm-hmm. lost a bid to those people, so they got pissed off, threatened them, waiting for them to move out because that was the whole goal. Yeah. Wait for it to drastically lower and then just take it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's possible. <laughs> there was also another thing saying that's that... that's why they were like, oh, you know, we're not worried about the letters. Yeah. Like we're not worried about it. Yeah, we're, we're not worried. We're good. About we're good. We did that. We're good. We're good. You know. Yeah. <laughs> but um, that's just a theory. That's not you mm-hmm. know. <laughs> there was also another thing that um. Uh, maybe the Bradises did it themselves because they realized that the renovations and stuff was way over their heads. Yeah, they were like, they, they were putting they, they were making a money could, pit almost. Yeah, they yeah. didn't realize that they couldn't handle it. That's, yeah, that could be another thing too. But you know, why didn't you just say, "Oh, we can't afford this and sell well, because it"? Because I guess the that's rich people safe ego. Base. Yeah. yeah, that's rich people ego. You can't say you can't afford something if you just paid one point three million dollars yeah. for the house. Well, can't you can't say you can't afford it. <laughs> you like you know, in that in that and th- those kind of circles, you can't say that. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you you would you would rather make it look like you were scared out of the house, yeah. than just be like, oh, I can't afford it. I can't. I would it. rather put my kids' <laughs> lives in danger than just yeah. say I can't afford it. <laughs> well, supposedly. Yeah, supposedly. <laughs> But yeah, so that is the story of The Watcher, at least Mm. from what I could research. Like I said, I'm sure there's probably a whole lot more information, but that's just what I found. And honestly, like, this story just blew my mind. It was so interesting, you know, like, especially it being a Jersey story. Mm -hmm. Because they even tried to tie, like, John List, who was a serial, not serial killer, um, he killed his family in Westville, like, mm. literally a couple blocks away from this house. Yeah, they try to tie him they in there. They try to tie him in there somehow, <laughs> and it's like, why? He has no no part in this. Yeah. He killed his family in, like, the 1940-somethings, or even <laughs> earlier than that, maybe. This happened in, like, 2000-something. Like, there's no reason to bring those two together. No, there's not. <laughs> but, like, you know, there's, like, those connections and, you know... The stuff over-dramatized like stuff. The stuff that people want to yeah. talk about. The stuff that people want to create their own stories within yeah. a story. So it makes them look like they created the yep. story. <laughs> and then, of course, you know, you have The Watcher on Netflix now. Um, the people that don't know this story are thinking that that is what is happened. It, yeah. Even, it says loosely based. Yeah. Like, well, <laughs> well, like I said, I saw a comment on Facebook underneath one of like the articles about it. Mm. And he was like, I was I was so disappointed at the fact that they didn't even move the real story. They didn't even move into the house, and it's like, no, they didn't. Like you know, Brian <laughs> Murphy, the the director or whatever, took took liberties, and that's yeah. fine that you take yeah, liberties. Yeah, you can. Like, it's not it's not, know, it's not a copywritten story. I'm it's... sure it's a really good fucking show, movie, whatever. Yeah. But you know, like I just think it's funny that people expected that to be like the story. Yeah. You know, it's so. not. I mean, I guess it's a lot more milder than probably what Ryan Murphy cooked up. Because yeah. Ryan Murphy, in case you don't know, is the one that did um, American Horror Story. Yeah. So he's, like, twisted in his Oh, yeah, he's, he's <laughs> twisted and turning it like a mother. Yeah. He, he's M. Night Shyamalan in that whole yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, so that's it. Um, what a twist. <laughs> what a twist. <laughs> but, yeah, so that's the story of The Watcher. Um I'm so happy to be back. Like, yeah. this was so fun yeah. doing this. Um, get ready for more episodes. We're going, hopefully going back to weekly episodes. Yeah. Um, I have a bunch more episodes already done. So mm. just get excited, man, because Haunted Cafe is back. And, and, what, and what's cool is a lot of the stuff that she's, that you're going to be talking yeah. about. I don't think I've ever brought this up. But there's a lot of stuff that you're going to be talking about. She's going to be talking about, however you want to, you know, yeah. reference that. That I'll probably already mostly know about just because i started listening to this podcast called uh, earth ancients and they talk about like a lot of stuff that you brought up like i even brought up to you like oh yeah and you were like oh yeah that's from so and so blah blah Mm -hmm. blah and i had brought that up so like there's there's quite a few things that i might know that she's actually talking about that i could actually 
vocally put my input into because I have heard yeah. similar things and I'm not just hearing it for the first time. Yeah, because I know that, so. like, this story wasn't, like, completely unknown. But no, no, no. the past episodes, you've kind of just, like, sat and listened because, you know, you don't know yeah, I don't, I don't really know. It. Like, I'm hearing it for the first time. Yep. It's, it's cool and I don't want to interrupt you too much. You know? Yep. But, like, this one, this one was, like... This one was more just, like, let's talk about it. Yeah, let's know? talk about that, you know? <laughs> yeah, <L-tat. laughs> I don't know if that's copywritten. So I don't please know. Please don't sue us. <laughs> but we were just talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> just just talking. Yeah, but that's yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Sorry it was so long. Sorry I was sick. Like, that's basically what has been putting me off of starting to record. Because I was going to start recording this episode at the beginning of October and it's October 21st now yeah. so I mean it's not just because I was sick but it's been the main reason that's like like life has gotten in yeah. the way like life has definitely gotten in the way we're doing a lot of stuff now we didn't do any ad breaks for ourselves like we used to no, but we got plenty of episodes, <laughs> yeah we got plenty so. of episodes but yeah there's, there's just been a lot of stuff that's been going yep. on like a lot and it's life's just been crazy so my life is kind of crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm David, and my life is kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, uh, so uh, hopefully you guys keep listening, and hopefully you like what we got coming for you. So, yeah. yeah. You know you know what else we didn't do that we forgot to do? What? Episode, ooh, or whatever. Oh, yeah, I don't even know what episode this is. No idea. We Maybe we shouldn't do episodes. Yeah, I'm fine with it. Yeah. We'll just call it on this program, you know what I mean? Well, in this program, we bring you Courage, the Cowardly Dog. <laughs> we already did that. <laughs> Starring Courage, the Cowardly Dog. I still got it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you guys for listening, and we'll see you next time. Catch you later. <laughs>